read Mary Kendrick's article, Using Student Collaboration to Foster Progressive Discourse, and in her article, she begins by giving examples of two different classrooms, which she later explains is um, a classroom from 1998 and a classroom from 2008. And the differences that she gives between the two classrooms who are working on um, reading books and understanding uh, To Kill a Mockingbird as well as Siddhartha. Um, the difference between the groups is that in 1998, the work of the group work was more to cover the material that was presented in the novels, whereas in the group work that is presented from 2008, the groups are more working towards creating an understanding by generating their own ideas. Whereas in 1998, they were more just given the ideas that they were supposed to memorize by the teacher. In a lot of these groups that you see, the groups are um, using a lot of posters, a lot of sticky notes to present to the class. Group presentation is shown as a very important way um, to present the material that the groups are learning, just to kind of show the learning and to present it to the class so that the class or the groups in the class kind of do a job of teaching just like the teacher does so that you can give different groups different information and they can sort of present it to the class like a teacher would. So that's one really great thing that you can do with group work. Um, an idea that she talks about a lot is how it's a community of inquiry and how she began to think of her classroom and group work as a community of inquiry after reading um, Breaking Into the Circle, Group Work for Change in the English Classroom by Hefzibah Roskali. Um, and that really changed the way that she thought about group work in the classroom. Another interesting way that she gives for what you can do with group work is by creating classroom rules. This was a great example that she talked about. And what she says is that students should, in groups, make their own rules, and um, then you can take those rules and sort of make a combined list of rules. And what she says about it is that I could have generated a similar list on my own and included it in my syllabus, but since the students discovered these ideas for themselves through reading, reflection, and discussion, they took on a greater weight. And that's an idea that she really focuses on a lot in the article, that whenever students are creating and generating their own ideas through group work, it becomes more important to them, and they want to work harder to achieve those goals or towards the rules, or they want to work harder to gain an understanding if they're able to come to that understanding on their own rather than just given something that they're supposed to know by their teacher. She also says that group work can be used to supplement lectures and presentations for things the students may have missed or if they were zoned out. Even though no teacher likes to admit that students may not have been paying attention, obviously it happens a lot. And um, Mary Kendrick really... Um, says that, like I said before, you can use presentations by the class to present this information again, or students can kind of see it in a different way and in a way that makes it more interesting to them and that may enable them to make better connections if they're working on it in their own and in groups. And then at the end of her article, she makes a final push for group work and for this community of inquiry, saying... Many arguments in favor of student collaboration stress the importance of students developing social skills or cite evidence of increased student engagement during group activities. Without a doubt, these are important reasons to make collaborative learning a central part of English instruction. However, to realize the full potential of small groups, we must also recognize their capacity to build knowledge. And that's her main point, is that students feel a lot more empowered whenever they are able to work in groups and to build their own understanding.